it's not the sound that you want to hear when you're out climbing. <laughs> Is it bad if I scream behind the camera? How fuzzy is too fuzzy? This is the rope that I used for about two years of intense climbing. Or at least this is the end of this rope. If I compare it to the middle, this is how the middle of the same rope looks. And as you can see, it's a huge difference. So the question is, should I worry about this fuzziness? Or another question that I see climbers disagree a lot on is if I can squeeze my rope like this, does it mean that inside core strands are damaged or no? So to avoid breaking my back on homemade experiments, yeah, as some of you noticed, it can be quite stressful. So not this time. This time I decided to reach out to Mammoth and ask if by any chance I could come over and nerd with their engineers. How dangerous is this? <laughs> we will find out. <laughs> so this is a product developer from Mammoth and you said you're an expert in textile. Would you whip on this? Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> Can we destroy this rope? I would say the core strands won't fail if it's a normal sport climbing fall. Within the first fall? No, 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 not the first fall. No. Would you whip on this? Oh yes, definitely. How many yeah. times? So this rope is not the same rope that we used in the experiment. That one was a little bit worse than this. And it kind of died. Can ropes die? Anyway, the goal was to find out what happens if you take a huge fall and the soft spot hits on your quick draw exactly on the peak force. And by the way, this video is not sponsored, but in case you don't know, Mammoth is one of the oldest companies making climbing ropes. So we have some serious knowledge about that. So I wanted to know everything. Let's get nerdy. I have a bunch of questions from me and my followers. Sounds great. Uh, you're probably gonna add 10,000 more questions. I'm sorry. And by the way, the questions that you guys send had some serious sense of practicality. A cat pees on my rope, how bad is that? Or a dog peed on my rope, how bad is that? <laughs> if you have a dry rope. <laughs> we tested with human pee. Because, I mean, if you're on a multi-pitch and you have to go... Yeah. So you actually did the testing on this? Yes, and uh, uh, the answer is no, it's not dangerous. I wonder if cat's pee or dog's pee is more aggressive than a human pee. Hey! Let's go do some science! So this is where the rope testing magic happens and this is where you get those six, seven, eight or whatever falls on the rope. Exactly. Yeah, statistics. The scenario is like really, really hard. Like we have a fall factor of around uh, 1.7. Um, we test the ropes with a 80 kilogram steel mass, which is like super static. What are the forces on standard tests? For a single rope, it's around like eight to nine KN. For a first fall. On the edge for the first fall. And we had the first problem. So-called standard rope test that every manufacturer does is super extreme. In order to make it more like a real climbing fall, we needed to reduce it below four kilonewtons. And if you ask why four, it means that you haven't seen these two videos, where we tried to create the hardest real climbing falls and measure the forces of them. That's why I said like maybe we try like with a new rope to get like a feeling like what falling height okay. you need to have like around this okay. less than 4kn and then we switch to your rope. Don't look, guess. 2kn. 2k? I think it's less. <laughs> wow, two and a half. As I said, these guys are really good. It took only one fall and we got the force of two and a half kilonewtons on a brand new rope. And that was perfect because we were estimating that once we swap the ropes to the old one, the force will go slightly higher because all the ropes don't absorb the impact as well. And it's gonna be a perfect representation of realistic hard climbing fall. So here's the tricky part. When you fall on rock, Sometimes it happens that almost the same spot hits the car top carabiner yeah, yeah, again yeah, and yeah, again yeah, and again. Yeah, yeah. And now the tricky part is how to place that spot that it would be on a peak force on the carabiner. Yeah. 
<laughs> Not easy or hard is easy. As you can imagine, once the fall happens, the rope stretches and that soft spot that we are trying to hit will move. Is it from, from uh, nach da, 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 da. You thought it's gonna be easy? No, no, <laughs> I, I knew it will be exactly like this. The force to the rope will start increasing, 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 and at some point reaches the maximum, and then the force will start dropping, 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 dropping. So the challenge is how to position this soft spot that it would move over the quick draw as close to the peak of the force. With this uh, small fall scenario, a new rope holds about like, what, 400? 300, 400, 500. Falls. Like, uh, a lot. So, new rope would hold about 400 falls like on realistic small, fall. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what happens if we put With that damaged, damaged rope and see mm -hmm. if it's hundreds or it's just few. Vietai. Mm -hmm. so, do you think we will hit that spot or we will be very far off? I think we hit it. Yeah. Where is it now? Like 30 centimeters below. Yeah, it's around here now. Yeah. And the rope is tense, so yeah. probably this will move up. Yeah. How much? We will see. <laughs> So we overshoot the soft spot just by a little bit. So we will try to readjust now and see if we can hit it more perfectly. So we managed to hit the spot at 2.47 kilonewtons of force. And now we will try to increase the fall a little bit to get to really hard falls. 20, 30 centimeters. Yeah, what do you want to do that? Let's see if we will still stay in the, the damaged spot where it will just stretch over. So we broke the shift. We broke the shift after two falls. <laughs> and you but said it it's gonna already. last. But you it was. was no, but that's what I said, like, the sheet will break what, what, somehow, what was but the force? The force was only 2.1 2. 2. 1. 1. 1. Only 2. 1 kilonewtons and the sheet broke. <laughs> so, if your rope is soft, good luck. <laughs> if the sheet is already damaged, like we saw it like now, this will lead like to cut it sheet, like, immediately but uh, the good thing is that the rope will not slap, uh, snap um, because the core strands like are re uh, still intact so how many falls it would take now to completely snap the rope that's a good question i never mm. tested this <laughs> <laughs> but we could do this i guess we can do at least like two or three falls now only on the course yes strands. guess yeah. guess how many falls it's gonna take 20 20 yeah Wow, so it took only two falls to From completely the shrap mm -hmm. the sheath. But the good thing is like a rope is constructed in a way that the sheath only takes around like 10 to 20% of the load. Mm -hmm. And the rest, like the, the uh, load bearing structure is basically only the core. Okay, so, so the question is, if you take a rope and you squeeze it so you feel that it's soft completely yeah. inside, mm -hmm. does it mean that the core is damaged or no? No. No, because no. a lot the of people is, think that mm -hmm. it's damaged yeah. inside. Yeah. The core is still intact. Like if I would cut the rope at that spot, would I find some damage inside of the core strands? It's difficult to say because over time, the core strands also when we do fall tests, you can see that it gets a little bit more hairy. Um, if you would cut it open, but it's just um, a couple of filaments that might have broken, but it's not that an entire core strand is broken, but um, so it's weakened for sure. Let's see if we can snap this rope mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So how many falls you said? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 10 to 20? <laughs> 10 to 20. Let's see. So this is one multi-filament. Multi-filament made out of multiple filaments. Yes. How Those much? 280. This is count. 280 inside yes. of this. So if I would take one 
what force <laughs> that one thing would hold? Well, you would not test it like this because a multifilament, you look at it as the entire thing. But what I can tell you that this core strand would hold 180 kilos. And we are not even reaching very hard falls yet. It's no, too this is nothing. Oh. Oh, one strand snapped. So you said 20. How many strands are inside? Two of eight. So you said 20 falls and we... 10 to 20. <laughs> 20. Apart from standard drop tests, what are other tests that are performed on climbing ropes? What we usually do is also test the abrasion resistance of the rope. So there we have an in-house developed testing method. So it's a machine which pulls a rope over a sharp metal edge and we are counting how many cycles it takes for actually damaging the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> we have like two parts now broken. So we have one part and two parts broken. Yeah, if we talk about abrasion resistance, I have some interesting stuff to show you. 200 cycles, so 200 times uh, back and forth. Here you see a classic rope. So it does not have any treatment, impregnation, mm -hmm. it's a 9.5. It's pretty worn out. Huh? It is worn yeah. out. It's at the point where I would consider maybe even cutting this. Yes, and you should. The next to it, we have also 9.5, but it has the dry treatment. What? That's a huge difference. Yes. That's exactly the same rope, but just dry treated. Yes. That's a huge, huge difference. Is it a little bit out? It feels a little bit burnt, like when you touch it, it definitely got hot like on the edge. So yeah. your six lives oh. got a bit damaged. But oh, that's good to know. Like you can climb. You can climb. Oh, you would climb on this. I mean, the Fritz throwers was done by Jean Villeneuve like with a sheet cutted rope, like from the beginning on. I think in the second pitch or third pitch, he had a stone fall and his rope already got cut. <laughs> like the sheet was completely damaged and he did the whole Fritz throwers with this rope. Then he like repaired a lot over it. Does the percentage of sheath versus core strands. It's not always the same. In sport climbing ropes. Yeah, or like climbing ropes in general. It's, it's not yes. always the same. No. And no. what does it depend on? Well, for us, it depends on what kind of rope we want to make. Sport so. climbing rope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, let me show you something. <laughs> show me something. Okay, so you have the interplay of both. The percentage of material that is the chef, but also um, how the chef was constructed. For example, here, on this rope, we have more chef twines. So if you would count these singular ones, mm -hmm. they are much more than on this chef. Oh yeah, that's almost double, no? Um, no, well, that, that it isn't, but it's just a slight difference. But if you check out the surface, um, you can see that here, the little cubes that they form are smaller than on this one. So here we have a super fine surface of the of the chef. So if mm -hmm. you, for example, would touch this one, it feels much rougher. Yeah. So this is also what makes it more durable. <laughs> so we are still very far from 20. But what's the force? Maybe I get some coffee, huh? No? Yes. <laughs> Oh, it was already 3.4. Yeah. yeah, it's increasing and increasing. So the dynamic performance of yeah. the rope gets lower and lower and lower. This one here is our workhorse construction. It does not have any treatment, but we're using the best and the finest yarns that we have to make this construction. And it also, I would say, you know, it's as good as the dry rope. So why not all ropes are made this way where we have finer uh, construction because price matters yeah now i would like to see not 200 cycles but 1000 yes they come here oh, oh really <laughs> no, not the 2000 <laughs> but the 500 i would climb with this one and with this one or if i have a risky day i would choose this do you have risky days sometimes turns out size or diameter 
is not all that matters when we talk about durability. Construction and extra treatments might have a bigger impact. It's a crazy difference now, having in mind that all of them will run through the same process. To the point where super thin 9.0 millimeters rope looked completely fine after 500 of cycles of dragging it across the sharp edge. This one looks quite good. Like a little bit fuzzy, but I would definitely use it. However, much thicker 9.5 millimeters rope, but old construction and no treatments were completely done. My guess is five more falls and we snap it. Maybe not. Uh, I think we have to increase. Otherwise, yeah, let's increase. Everybody wants harder falls, but it's already getting harder. We went yeah, from yeah. two and a half yeah. to three and a half. Yeah. yeah. To increase. We can just keep dropping. Keep dropping. Yeah. Well, keep dropping. I will get coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Coffee. Espresso. Longo. Longo. Uh, Longo, if possible. Are you asking the viewer uh, with milk? Are you sending the viewers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the corner coffee. Yeah. One interesting observation I got while I was making this intro animation, which, by the way, took me multiple days and multiple attempts, was that while the rope is new the file glides over the rope very smoothly and it's pretty hard to make any damage to it. But once the rope starts becoming fuzzy, it becomes easier to make some extra damage. So it felt like the fuzziness or the damage to the rope is kind of exponential. The worse it gets, the easier it is to make it even worse. Oh yeah, let's do it again. All these six tracks left. Whoa! So, okay. <laughs> So you can come back already with your coffee. So the force went lower, but one strand snapped. No, two. Two snapped. But the sound of the strand snapping was... Is it uh, bad if I scream behind the camera? It, it's not the sound that you want to hear when you're out climbing. <laughs> okay, the fun part. How fuzzy is too fuzzy or how soft the rope is too soft? When should people actually cut it? I mean, you, you put the rope through your hands, how huh, to, to check the ropes, this you should do on a regular basis. And what are you doing when you're pulling? Well, on the one hand, I feel the rope, so I feel the, how the rope behaves, if it's super soft, if it's uh, thicker, and at the same time, you know, you, you pull it over your finger and you look at it, so you do like a visual inspection. Good. <laughs> Beautiful rope. Wood whip. Would you whip? You would whip. You would whip? Oh, the force went lower again. So basically the less coarse strands we have, the better the rope is. The softer the catch is. <laughs> I wouldn't see it that way, but... If you want a soft catch, just break the rope. So let's say I'm running my rope through my hand and I find a spot which is softer. So how do I know if it's already bad? Or first consider the whole rope. I mean, if you have a really soft rope, because there are, I mean, some ropes are already soft when you, you, you buy them in the store, mm. huh? I would say that our ropes are a little bit stiffer in general, and we do that to make them more long lasting. But if your whole rope is very soft and you have a spot which is just a little bit softer, mm, I would say I would not mm -hmm. like say, oh, that's super dangerous, huh? But if you have the rope is generally really stiff and then you have one spot which is ultra soft then you know something is not right there huh? and exactly what's not right there hey there is so many things that it could be so as an example if i would be just looking into this piece of the rope it would be pretty difficult to say how soft it needs to be and if i should cut it but if i compare it to the middle of the same rope i can clearly see a big difference so this clearly is far from what it used to be and it's better to cut this end. And if you want some tips on cutting ropes, check out this video. I don't think we can do another one. Unfortunately, the rope kept stretching and stretching and stretching until we almost reached the bottom of the drop tower and we couldn't do any more testing. However, we decided to show what happens if you have 80 kilograms of mass hanging on only coarse strands and you touch the coarse strands with the knife. It <laughs> just barely what touched. What did you do? You went too long. 
What happened? But what happened now? <laughs> so it didn't broke. So I was right with 10 to 20, right? Actually, yeah, just yes. To, yes, thanks. <laughs> so basically what we got is running very damaged rope on relatively hardish, maybe to normal foil. Yeah. Rear case scenario. Ripped the sheath of the rope in just two falls, which is yeah. very dangerous. But then it was good to see that the rope did not snap and only the core strands kept holding for yeah multiple more falls yeah. so that's good Pretty to know good safety margin but when he touched barely with the sharp yeah. knife the core strands he just barely touched it it snapped so if your shift gets away and then your rope runs across something sharp on the rock super dangerous yeah I think now we're coming to the second scenario you wanna you wanna show when it comes to sharp edge scenarios yeah. like the ropes don't have this high safety margin. Mwah! I hope that you are subscribed because the next experiment that I'm gonna show in the next video is gonna blow your mind and probably change a little bit the way you care about your climbing equipment. Okay, now I need you to pee. Come on.